Morning, welcome back to another CD pickup video. I say morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching it, I guess. What a great start. <laughs> so yeah, this is a CD update, and this is the second one I've done. Obviously, I started doing it last month, just showing you what CDs I've picked up from late last year and a few in January. And these are all the ones I've picked up in February, and there's around about 10 or 12 altogether. Haven't counted them. There are a few new artists, and then there's a few artists who... Um, whose material I bought last month. Obviously different albums. I bought the same ones, that would be weird. So yeah, there's a few different ones, but then there's a few repeats from last month. I'm really enjoying getting back into the CDs. I've got to be honest, you know, I do love iTunes. I know it's not for everyone, but I do like it. I like the fact, you know, that you can have everything just in one place, and at the click of a button you can play it, fantastic, and all the rest of it. But at the same time, I do miss that physicality, you know, of owning a CD and, I don't know, just that kind of relaxed attitude that you can adopt when you just put it on the CD player, sit back in, in a chair or lie on your bed or whatever you want to do and just, you know, maybe get the get the booklet out. Lie on the bed and get your booklet out. Sounds like a euphemism. You know what I mean? You know, just get the CD booklet out and, um, and just enjoy it and just read through it and all the rest of it. I do like that. And so, yeah, I'm really pleased I've got back into, into buying CDs because I love it. It's great. And the artwork's fantastic sometimes. Some of these are dodgy as... Uh, as hell, but you know, usually it's really good, interesting. I like how the spines are all different colours, much like games, I guess, and it just looks good. I like it anyway. So, anyway, music is very subjective, obviously. So, some of these you may not like, some you may not have heard of, some you would have heard of and do not like. You know, it, it's just the way of life, isn't it? I've said before, I'll probably always say it, but I do have a very eclectic taste, and I listen and like pretty much within reason anything. So, um, yeah, the, this doesn't really branch out very far this particular set of pickups here but over time you will see that I do you know get a lot of uh, weird stuff anyway first up is a band called Toshak Highway now you are probably without sounding patronizing you're probably um, you've probably never heard of them basically now Toshak Highway was a band formed by a guy called Adam Franklin and Adam Franklin was the lead singer or maybe joint singer I think he was the lead singer though and uh, a main songwriter in a band called Swerve Driver who you may also not have heard of. And if you have heard of them, and you like video games and stuff, which is the usual video I do, of course, uh, or set of videos I do, then you'll probably know Swerve Driver from the Road Rash games on the PlayStation 1, or Saturn, or 3DO, I guess. Did 3DO have the same music? Probably did. And anyway, Swerve Driver being the kind of band which is sort of like a pop, rock, kind of psychedelic sort of-ish band. And this moves it on a notch, and this is more kind of um, space pop if that makes sense, kind of like a bit of a dreamy pop. It's like, I mean, Adam Franklin doesn't have the best voice in the world. I think it's safe to say that. And the music kind of drowns his voice out, which I think is intentional because I, I think he knows he hasn't got a great voice. Yeah, so some of these, are, it's very kind of trippy, but not in like, um, not in that kind of uh, usual trippy music kind of sense. I guess you've got to have to listen to it to understand what I mean. What I'll do, if there's a link on YouTube to some of their stuff, I'll put a link below to maybe a selection of these songs on, from different artists. And you can click on them, see what you like, and you know you may discover a new band that you like. So yeah, that's Toshak Highway, and I really like Swerve Driver, who have just recently reformed. I say recently, about three and a half years ago. But they haven't released any new albums, it's just a case of just getting back together, doing a few gigs, and all the rest of it. So yeah, Toshak Highway, I'm pretty certain these lot finished, they just lasted maybe a couple of albums. But it's alright, it's alright. Oh, and by the way, just for any little bit of trivia here, Toshak Highway is named after two... Um, Two footballers who played for Liverpool. You had John Toshak and Steve Highway in the 70s. And I guess that um, maybe Adam Franklin, the singer, was a Liverpool fan. So that's how that name came about. Interesting trivia for you there. Next up is Pet Shop Boys and Disco. So you've just got a few songs on the back as I look, uh, like In the Night, Suburbia, West End Girls, and a few more. So basically just a, a disco version of their stuff. And Pet Shop Boys are brilliant. If you don't like him, you're weird. <laughs> Fact. Next up is um, next up is REM Out of Time. Not my favourite REM album, I've got to be honest, but it does have some good stuff on there. You know, Losing My Religion, I guess, is probably well. No, actually, Shiny Happy People is probably the most common one. But then again, Losing My Religion, just as just as famous. So yeah, decent album. And when did this come out? 1991. I mean, it seems like yesterday. That's crazy. Next up, we've got three Prodigy singles. Now, I think I had one last month. Can't swear to that, but I think I had, was it Breathe? I think I had Breathe. I've got three more. These are only, 
I think it was three dollars including shipping. So when I saw that on eBay, I was like, oh, I'm just having them. I don't usually want to buy singles. Have I got any more singles here? I may have one, I'm not sure. I don't want to really buy singles, but if they're cheap, I will. I, I want to tend to focus on albums. But like I say, if they're really cheap, I will pick them up. So I'll quickly go through these. Voodoo People. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what's this one? Smack My Bitch Up. That's a really controversial video. Really controversial. But clever. Clever how they did it. And Firestarter. That was a funny video with his hair kind of... Yeah. So that's that. Next up is Sting. The Soul Cages. I like Sting. I think the police are fantastic. And I know they reformed. I say reformed just to do that one-off gig, wasn't it? Or just a series of gigs. Three, four years ago. And uh, I, yeah, I'd love to see the, the police do a, another album, but... You know, you just get to the point where, you know, bands will split up eventually and you just got to let it be, haven't you? You know, to coin a Beatles phrase. But, um, yeah, I like I like Sting. Good artist. And speaking of Sting, here's another one. This one's called Bring On The Night and it's a double-cased CD, one that's very kind of old school. It looks like a PlayStation 1 double-cased thing, actually. And it's just a selection of, of songs. Looking on the back, there doesn't appear to be any hits on there. You know, no Sting, no Police hits. They're very kind of... Um, Unknown, I guess, to the majority of music fans, uh, and, and to me, you know, unknown songs. But I believe that this was recorded over a series of live gigs uh, in 1985, and this CD was, or double CD, was released in 86. But despite the fact that there was hardly any songs on there which people would recognise, you know, Big Sting and Big Police Hits, uh, it still did well in the charts. They got, like, top 15, top 20. So, I guess just selling that on the back of his name, you know, Sting and The Police. Next up we've got three CDs. Now I did have one of their albums last month and I saw another, and it came from the same seller, I saw another auction for these and I just thought, well I'm going to get them all. And it's a band uh, ridiculously titled Ned's Atomic Dustbin. And the first one up is called Brain Blood Volume. <laughs> now Ned's Atomic Dustbin, kind of like one of those early sort of indie, um, indie music bands. Not quite indie in the sense of like Britpop, which is what kind of merged on from the indie stuff. But very, again, I'll put a link in if I find one of their songs uh, on YouTube, and I'm sure there'll be a few. So that's that one. And they're not a great band, they're really not. But I've now got four of their albums, which makes it look like I love them, but I don't. I just like a few songs here and there. Next one up is called, um, oh, hang on, let's get the wrong one. Next one up is called Grey Cell Green. Grey Cell Green? Yeah, that's that one. Kind of a trippy, hippie sort of cover. And then last up but not least is Are You Normal? Am I normal for buying three more albums from a band that I'm not really that fond of? Probably not. But yeah, I, I don't mind them in all seriousness. I'm just, I just don't love them. And yeah, maybe I'll get into them over time. But, you know, they've been knocking around for 20 years now. And I've, a few songs here and there, but we'll see. Okay, three left. Starting off with Nirvana, Nevermind. An absolutely classic album. A classic album. One of the things I love about... And well, I was gonna say Nirvana, kind of Dave Grohl, who obviously was the drummer. You know, and Nirvana were a huge band, and then he goes and forms the Foo Fighters, who arguably, very arguably, were kind of bigger, better. I know it's controversial. I'm not saying I necessarily subscribe to that theory, but you know, the Foo Fighters have been around a while now. You know, nearly 20 years. When did they start? 94. Nearly 20 years. Nirvana were only around, I think, from like 88, 89 up until well, 94. So. Yeah, I don't, but still, while Nirvana were around, you know, they were a great, great band. And I've got great memories of having this on cassette, you know, when it first came out. And I remember going into Our Price Records. Okay, sorry about that. Telephone rang. So, um, interrupted me. As I was saying, Nirvana never mind. Now, I remember buying this, and I've got a really, I was going to say funny story. It's not really funny. I just remember buying this. But it was the cassette, obviously. It was from Our Price Records. Don't even think they're around anymore. But um, either way, people will probably remember Our Price and I went in there, and I remember it like it was yesterday, like I say, 1991, 13. I remember I was wearing a pair of jeans and a black and yellow checked flannel shirt, which was a very kind of grunge look. Now, I wasn't really into that grunge scene, so don't think that, you know, that was what I was wearing all the time. It just so happened that that day, I had a grunge kind of flannel shirt on while buying Nirvana, just fate, I guess, it was the way it was. And I remember, you know, going in there and feeling a little bit, I don't know why, but feeling a little bit kind of embarrassed. I think 13, you know, hormones and all that kind of thing. And I think I just, I know I was in kind of like an adult place. You know, I was in a music store. You know, you don't get many like kind of 13 year olds in there. It's usually the older kids or the or adults, obviously, who went in there and they knew what they were looking for. 
and they were into it and all the rest of it. And I, I don't know, I was just kind of getting into music properly there. You know, coming away from the, the poppy kind of stuff that we're all listening to from up into the age of sort of 12 or beyond. But, you know, when you get to sort of, you know, 12, 13, 14, you start, you know, developing musical tastes. You know what you like, you're experiencing new things. And, yeah, I was, I was kind of at that age. So even though I was kind of comfortable in what I wanted to listen to, I still felt a bit embarrassed. People looking at me in a music store thinking I was, like, too young. As if I didn't know what I was talking about, which I kind of didn't, but I thought I did. Does that make sense? I just kind of felt out of place in there because I was so young, basically. But anyway, I remember seeing Nirvana Nevermind, the cassette, like I say, on the shelf, and I picked it up in my flannel shirt, uh, took it over to the guy, and I remember, it, again, like it was yesterday, the guy must have, I mean, in hindsight, he can't have been that much older than me, really. Uh, well, maybe in his late teens or something, maybe in his 20s, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, I just remember him giving me a really odd look, as if, it, as if he thought that I was too young to be in there, like, which was my paranoia anyway, at the time. So, but maybe that's what it was, the paranoia, I was just, you know, um, convinced that everyone was looking at me, thinking, what are you doing here, it's too young. So, yeah, but he obviously took the, the cassette off me, put it in a little bag. I paid him the whatever it was, maybe 10 quid. Maybe it was less. How much were cassettes back then? I can't even remember. But I, yeah, I paid him the money and took it out in the little Our Price, Our Price bag, listened to it, and it was great. Great, great album. Good memories of this. And yeah, I'm a, bit, I'm a big Nirvana fan, not as much as I used to be. I mean, I, even though, like I said, I, I didn't really get into that whole grunge scene, I did like Nirvana. You know, they were probably my favourite band for a while. But very briefly, I'd say in around about 91, and then I kind of edged over to Guns N' Roses more, um, to be honest. And then that fascination with Guns N' Roses didn't last that long. I mean, I do like them, but I mean, I wasn't, you know, I didn't love them for that, that much, uh, that, that amount of time, because, you know, then the likes of Carter, The Unstoppable Sex Machine came out, Kingmaker, I've mentioned all these bands before, The Wonder Stuff, The Verve just started, and... All these other bands, the Inspiral Carpets, the Stone Roses, I started to get into that stuff in around about 91, 92. And, yeah, so I kind of... My, my flirtation, if you like, with grunge music was very brief, but I did enjoy it. It was good. Anyway, next up is a single, which, funnily enough, I said a few minutes ago that I'm going to try and avoid buying. But, you know, this is cheap. I think it was like a dollar. Um, so I did it. And it's R.E.M. Losing My Religion. I guess I should have showed this after I showed the, the album. But yeah, what can I say? It's got a couple of B-sides on there, Rotary 11 and After Hours, which is a live track. Yeah, I want to try and stay clear of getting singles, if I'm honest. I think I touched upon that a few minutes ago, but yeah, I want to concentrate on albums, but if one comes up cheap, I'll get it. And then last but not least, it's got a sticker on here. Oh, no, I'll have to take this off. But it's a band called the KLF. I love the KLF. They're really, you know, a really fantastic, very controversial band, really. I mean, they've done some really silly things. I mean, they're not around anymore. They've been around in various guises, like different band names and, you know, pitching up with other people and collaborating and stuff. But very controversial, some of the th uh, things they've done in the past, like uh, burning a million pounds in cash, which is obviously a bit of a publicity stunt, but, you know, just, I think them being a little bit kind of, I don't know, a bit pretentious maybe, but, you know, that made news at the time. It was about 1994, I think. So I remember that. Um... Yeah, they, they did things like firing machine gun blanks into an audience at an award ceremony. They put, I think at the very same award ceremony, they had like a dead sheep, you know, which, which just died or something there and then or something silly like that. Again, they're very controversial, but the music is fantastic. It's kind of, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's sort of a cross between like techno and a bit of pop, um, kind of very ambient, um, hip hop -y kind of. It's a mixture of everything, I guess. You'll only really know what I mean if you either know who they are or if you maybe click on a link. Again, I'll put a, a, an example to one of their songs in the description box below. But yeah, really great songs on the back of that. I mean, What Time Is Love is fantastic. Make It Rain. I mean, I can just go through all this. Brilliant. Justified and Ancient, fantastic. Got great memories of Justified and Ancient, which is probably going to be the one that a lot of people will know. It was the one they collaborated with Tammy Wynette, the country singer. Which sounds an odd kind of um, collaboration, but it works. It, well, it works for me, and it's one of my favourite nostalgic songs from this kind of era, 1991 again. So yeah, it's kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, when I was into Nirvana, I was kind of into KLF. So even back then, you know, I've, I've had a very, a very eclectic taste, and that that will always be the case with me. So anyway, that's my CD pickups for that month, or for this month, for February, the very last day in February. So I'll be back next month with 
even more amazing CDs. See you later.